Hello everyone, now left here. Today we're going to be working with uh, Fast Noise in the Godot Game Engine version 4.2.2 stable and I'm just going to show real quick what we're actually going to be working with. Uh, we're going to be working with this Fast Noise Light object and as you can see over here it inherits from noise which we'll come back to later and it basically makes noise. Um, I'm going to do a quick rundown that what could we make so I'm just going to refresh this uh, tab. As you can see we have um, basic noise. Um, we have different noise types which we can select in Godot as well. It's the exact same library just imported in Godot. I'm going to go with open simplex 2s I believe and you know you can change the seed, change the frequency. Higher frequency numbers give you more fine grain uh, noise um, images whereas lower ones give you blocky or more bold ones. Uh, we have this fractal uh, property over here. Again it's also over here in uh, fast noise light if we search up fractal. You can see that we have various fractal aspects and we can select fractal type as well and fractal type has um, see ping pong rigid fbm none um, if we go over here to the fast light fast noise light gui which i got from uh where did i get it from i got it from if you just search up fast noise light and you click on the first link then it will take you to the original implementation from auburn i hope i'm saying that right and uh on this web on this uh, repo i went to the web app preview over here and you can see over here when we click fractal if we click ping pong it creates different types of noises and we can all we can do this all in Godot. Now how do we actually do that in Godot and how do we like make a terrain with it using the tile map? Well that's pretty simple actually. So I'm just going to make a world scene over here. I'm going to save it into a source folder. If you're wondering how I added it I just click Control A to add a child node or you could just click this plus sign. So we're going to go make a tile map. Pretty simple and I'm just going to add a script uh, for simplicity's sake and we're just going to say that variable. I'm going to zoom in. We're going to say variable Fast noise light variable fast noise light is going to be equal to fast noise light dot new. Now we have the fast noise light object, and in our ready function, uh, we are going to say uh, generate map. In the generate map function, what do I want to do? Well, I obviously want to generate a map, so let's work on that. So for x in you know thirty or for y in thirty, uh, we're going to do something. Well, we have to set cells, right? So if I go set cell. Turns out I have to actually create a tile map. So let's go do that. Um, let's go back over here to the 2D scene and we have our tile set over here. I'm going to create a new tile set and it says you don't have anything. At this point, I recommend if you want a full in-depth tutorial, I have another video about this, three minutes, really short. But all I'm going to do is go to tile set, drag this over here. I'm going to say uh, no this time because I don't want you to make more tiles. I'm going to click on both of them to make sure I know what the atlas coordinate is over here and over here. So 1, 1 and 4, 2. And now if I go over here to tile map, I can draw with this one or I can draw with this one. Now we're going to go and programmatically set cell. So if I do control spacebar, I can get the little tool type hint uh, over here, this black box that tells me what's happening. So layer is going to be zero, almost always going to be zero. Uh, coordinates, I'm going to do as a vector two i, vector two i, and it's going to be x and y. Where, get, where are we getting these x and y from? Well, we're getting this in our loop. So for x and 30, so it's going to count zero, one, two, three. But every time it counts a number here, it's going to count 30 over here. So Four is uh, it's going to go one and it's going to go one two three four all the way to thirty two and then all, all the way to thirty so we basically get a, a grid like pattern from that next source ID is going to be zero as well don't worry about that and atlas coordinates are going to be vector two one one because we said that was one of them and we're going to select current scene if I click f five to run and select current as you can see we have our square now what I want to do is I want to use this fast noise light uh, to generate the cells. It's really simple because if I go back to the documentation from Godot itself and um, I see that fast noise light inherits from noise. If I go to the noise documentation right here, you can see that noise has a few things that we need. This get noise function over here is very important because what this allows me to do is get a certain value like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 from a certain x, y. This is the same thing as over here. Basically, this entire website says, OK, we have a giant map over here as a certain x, y. So right over here and right over here, there's a certain x, y. And if I get the value, some random value like 0 0.1, then it will be black. But if it's 0 0.5, it will be white. And that's how this works. If it's 0 0.3, it will be gray. And that's kind of how this uh, random noise generation works. And we'll do the exact same thing saying fnl dot get noise 2d at x and y. Um, X and Y, yes. So we're just going to call this noise at the moment, uh, noise value, let's say. And we're going to print out noise value to get an understanding of what we're working with. And you can see we have a, excuse me, we get a bunch of values. 
they range from about 0 0.3 to about 0. So that means I'm going to say if my noise value is less than 0. Point, let's say 15, 14, why not? And I want to set the cell to this. Now let's see what happens. You can see that we have the sort of a cave generation over here. Not necessarily cave generation, but we have some sort of generation. And right now, all I'm doing is I'm going back over here and I want to get rid of um, all this. I'm sure there's a better way to get rid of it, all of it. Personally, I would, okay, let me see what I do. I would fill it in and then I would delete it. Okay, there we go. Now that I've got all that gone, you can see that set cell, um, if it's less than 0 0.14, then I want to, you know, um, set it to this cell. Else, I'm going to set it to a different cell, which is the one right over here at 2.4, I believe. I didn't believe it's 4.2, but whatever this cell is, okay, it's 4.2. As you can see, I'm just copying down the Atlas coordinates number because that is what the last position or the second last position of this uh, set cell function takes in. The last position takes in alternative tile, which we don't really need to worry about. And it's not going to run because I did not put a parenthesis there. Now I'm going to go randomize as well. Just so we have a, a bit of like randomness every single time. It's giving me the same thing every time, which is not a problem. We can work around that. I'm going to also expand this and uh, get a bigger map. And you can see we have some sort of noise. Now, at the beginning, I said you could make this in Godot. Um, right now, we're getting something like this web app preview, which honestly is still pretty cool. But um, not the best, you know. Uh, we want something cooler. I think this looks pretty cool. It looks like worms or something. Um, centipedes crawling around. I don't know. But it's pretty cool. But you can see over here, it's using Open Simplex 2S. If we go over here to the Fast, no light, fast Noise Light documentation, we can see that in Fractal, not Fractal type, where is it? Noise type. In Noise type, we have, well, we don't have, op we don't have the Open Simplex Noise, but we have Type Simplex Smooth, which is a higher quality version of Type Simplex. Let's use that. I'm not 100% sure if that's the correct one, but hey, uh, part of using this fast noise light is uh, just making sure you have uh, fun with it and playing around. So I'm going to use Simplex Smooth. And if I just run it now, uh, what we can do as well is set the frequency to a random flipped. And if we do this, you can see that we will get different patterns. And now we are starting to generate different types of case. On top of that, I realized why I was getting the same thing every time. It's because randomize was not at the top. Um, I just realized this as I was talking. So now you can see we get the same thing again. Now we're going to add a small, this is just a small uh, side step, but if I just want to like restart, I'm going to go to my project settings input map and I'm going to add a small restart uh, section in. So this is just personal, um, like how I like to do things. But if I have a input event of if event dot is action, uh, pressed uh, restart then I just want to get tree and reload the current scene so we can do that too uh, I'm still getting the exact same thing and I finally realized the reason I was getting the exact same thing each time is because the seed of the fast noise light object was set to the same thing every single time but now when I set it to a random integer each time now you can see we get something different each time um, I just want to make a note that at the moment, you might be wondering, ew, it's so blocky. The reason it's blocky is because the tile map is 16 by 16, and we're only going 60 like blocks um, to the side and 30 blocks down. Um, we could change this by making this 4x4, four four, and then obviously that would mean we'd have to change our tile map as well. So to change your tile map in the middle of using it, all you have to really do is you have to delete the current tiles you have. Uh, you have to go over here to tile set. In the setup tab over here, you have to type in texture region as or texture region size as 4x4 four because four, you want to make it map the match the tile size over here and after that you can select your tiles that you want although this does mean we change the vector um atlas coordinates now you can see over here we have six six so i'm going to do six six and then i'm going to go do 12 11 12 11 and now i run the scene it should give me a smaller box and that's because um we're uh, we shrunk the cell size now if i make it about you know 300 by 150 and now i run the scene you can see that we have a lot more um crisp clean caves uh and of course now i'm just going to be showing that you could play around with it so uh one thing i did find on reddit over here thanks to Cal Calinu, i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly on this uh link on this uh, reddit post about a year ago uh they said that there's a noise viewer. I haven't tried this out, but it looks like it works and you could play around with the noise in Godot yourself. 
However, um, we're just going to be doing it ourselves with the tile map, which I think is cooler. Um, we can play around with this, seeing which ones give us the really cool... Oh, so Paint Perlin and Rigid, we can try that out and set the octaves to every like similar numbers. So we're going to type in the fractal values and change them. So I'm going to go over here to FN Fast Noise Light, the Fast Noise Light object. Fractal, if I type in, oops, if I can spell, fractal type, if the type is equal to um, rigid, okay, yes, I typed in rigid, and then Perlin up here, so type underscore Perlin, um, and if we just run it as is, we should get something completely different. Yeah, it looks a lot more different. However, this one looks cooler, and the reason is because maybe the octaves are higher, so I'm going to close this, and I'm going to go FNL dot fractal octaves equal 30. We could do 4 too. And if you want to see what the default value is, you just have to control click or go to the documentation in Godot and see that fractal octaves, it says default is 5. So now it's 3 and it should generate different things. Oh, it's a lot smoother. That's interesting. What else is, uh, okay, the lunar, lunar citricity. Now I'm not 100% sure if I pronounced that correctly. If you just play around with it, you can see that if your value is higher, I guess the more noisy it is and the lower your value, the less noisy it is. So we can also change that. So fractal, okay, there we go. And if I just set it to 2.0, we can see that we get different-ish, kind of. I mean, you just have to play around with it at this point. And I'm just uh, dragging on this video's length uh, longer than it has to be. But you can j kind of get stuff like what you see here if you play around with the values and uh, eventually come across a map generation system that you like a lot and you want to put into your own game. Um, if you increase octaves, I believe that also makes it a lot more noisy. Or if you even change the fractal type. And obviously you can change these on the fly and make different cave systems with this. Um, and putting in a player here and making sure the caves link up together is a totally different story. But I'm here to just show that you can make uh, certain objects in Godot. Or you can make a cave-like pattern with the tile map in Godot. And the way you would do it is by using the set set. Of course you can also change this. Whatever hard-coded value I have here, uh, you can always change like, let's say 0 0.5. You probably get very very bad case if you'd made it 0 0.1 you'd probably get really open case assuming light blue is like an open space whereas uh, dark blue is a closed space you can see here that these caves are a lot more open and whatnot and obviously if you delete a line you get a different result and i'm kind of just repeating myself at this point but uh you just have to play around with this and um, i'm just showing the basics of how you could show and kind of make noise now i'm getting kind of similar patterns and probably because i have the same parameters but if i made fractals one then I'm getting large blobs, whereas fractals being three, two, and then having, uh, if I make fractals three and I do make type cellular, then obviously I'll get something super different, uh, maybe too different. Um, if we see, now I'm just going to show what, um, how you could debug it. Let's say you don't get anything, and that's probably because when in your output, all your values are negative, which is really, really interesting. Um, so all we have to do is make this absolute and less than let's say 0. Uh, let's say 0. 0.3 or 35 and now this is not going to run because I didn't set the type and now you can see that we get really different things it's a lot more open way more open than I thought it would be so maybe 55 and now we get blobs but the point is you can play around with this and make different caves and just play with your heart's content that's all I have to say have an amazing day. Again, you can see over here that the seed was uh, below, and that's why I was getting the same thing. I'm still getting the same thing. Okay. Anyways, uh, 